Welcome back everybody. So we got Hydra Takeover right here in the background, but while I was doing this, we got some awesome news come through from Plarium that I want to share with you guys. So, folk, hey folks, we've got some news about the progress missions, which are actually really good sources of rewards. A lot of players get stuck getting into gold one. Those are the progress missions. We're adding a separate new branch of missions that will become available simultaneously with the missions that unlock Ramen 2 Drake's Blood. So it's not, you know, finish Ramen 2, then you get these missions. These missions become available simultaneously, which is really cool because we get even more free rewards, which after you finish the Ramen 2 missions, which takes a long time for most players, you don't get those sweet free rewards from the missions anymore. But now, for those players, we have a little bit longer of those sweet free rewards, meaning that once you complete the missions to get Arbiter, you'll be able to go for Ramen 2 and start a new branch at the same time. Pretty cool stuff. More free rewards, like I said. There will be a total of 180 new progress missions divided into three groups of 60. I assume what that means is like three groups of 60, as in 60, you get a milestone reward, 60, milestone reward, 60, milestone reward. Just like with like Ramen 2 and Arbiter, you had those like milestones, chapters basically. Um, so group of 60, the new missions will focus on the following features. Live Arena, Curse City, Hydra, Champion Awakening, kind of weird, maybe, Gear, Gear, Ascension, and so on. And of course, just as always, you'll be able to receive various rewards for completing each task. Now, I really hope this stuff is retroactive. I assume Live Arena is going to be retroactive. Curse City, I hope it's not like clear a complete rotation on hard mode. That's going to be pretty difficult. Doable, some rotations, but very difficult. Hydra, okay, that's going to be pretty cool, I think. Champion Awakening, as long as it's like awaken X number of champions to a low star ranking, ranking as long as it's not like awaken six champions to six star awakening that's going to take a long time for many players so this is going to be very dependent on what the missions actually are gear gear ascension hopefully it's retroactive as well if not I'm not gonna be the hardest thing in the world to do as long as you're doing sand devil or shogun assuming it's also a, um, ascension for accessories so you'll be able to receive rewards for completing each task once you complete all 180 new missions you can claim the main reward in the form of a brand new legendary champion marius the Galliant. Let's check this dude out. So you see up here, I have an Enfeeble tab. This is going to be very important in just a moment. So this horse champion right here, what does he bring? He is a super, super good legendary champion, a Void legendary champion. So his A1 is an AoE attack, 35% chance, books up to 50% chance of placing Enfeeble debuff for one turn. Well, what is Enfeeble? We see it on Shogun, but we don't really see it anywhere else. I think there's like one other champion who has it or can have an interaction with it. Maybe. Maybe it's Yumiko on Phantom Shogun, but most champions don't have access to this. It's a very new debuff. What it does is it makes it so that enemies only land weak hits. No crits, no strong hits, no normal hits, just weak hits. So basically, you had trouble surviving. Well, you're not going to have trouble surviving no more. Marius is going to place an AoE weaken. Sorry, an AoE Enfeeble, which is mind-blowingly awesome, especially if it works on things like the Hydra. That's possibly going to be broken. Actually, I take it back. Um, Androck does place Enfeeble, and I believe it does work on the Hydra as well. So now we have a free champion who places Enfeeble. That is going to be so incredibly good, and it's on an A1 AoE ability as well. AoE A1, Void Legendary Champion, defense-based, so he's going to be tanky. He's not going to weak hit anyways, placing this. So that is a super good ability. And then his A2, also not lacking. So it attacks all enemies three times. Each hit decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. Now, if I recall correctly, this should not proc Polymorph because it's decreasing the duration. It's not removing it. So it's three hits. So most buffs have about a three-turn duration, except for things like Stone Skin. It may not fully strip that because of how Stone Skin actually works. You don't have a 100% chance of actually stripping it, so on and so forth. But an AoE attack three times, each hit has a chance of decreasing the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. That is a super, super good ability. I believe he is the highest AoE decrease duration of buffs because most champions do it like a one or maybe two turns, but he's doing it three turns potentially. And then his A3 places a 50% increased accuracy buff and a 50% increased defense buff on all allies for three turns, then places a stun debuff on the enemy with the highest turn meter for one turn, finally grants an extra turn. So this ability is going to be booked down to the three turn, the uh, A2, the A3 is going to book down to four turn, which is pretty low cooldowns in general. And then his passive ability, this champion is immune to turn meter reduction effects and decreased speed debuffs. Whenever an enemy changes form or attempts to decrease his champion's turn meter, counterattacks using this champion's default skill. In other words, if a mythical champion 
tries to change forms. Makage tries to decrease his champion's turn meter. He's going to counterattack using his champion's default skill. That is incredible, especially considering his default skill is an AoE and feeble. So if, you're, if the enemy mythical champion, a Crixia or whatever, switches forms, going first, uh, Lazarius, whoever it is going first, switches forms, the enemy doesn't have any um, stone skin, block debuffs, something like that, well now, you're just enfeebling everybody. Very cool stuff, definitely. Maybe if you want to have him as a debuffer, you have stun, stun gear on the A1, stun gear on the champion, so the A1 ability now, AoE, places a stun, has a chance to. Granted, polymorph is a possibility, but a provoke could work well also in case you don't just place the enfeeble. You have a chance to place in the other stuff as well to lock out those champions. So very, very cool stuff on his kit. And then his aura increases ally defense in all battles by 35%. So I'm looking forward to the new missions. I'm going to see what this Hydra team's like. Okay, I got to click this head over here real quick. I think a champion may have gotten swallowed. May have to rerun this. Either way, I'm looking forward to... Yeah, somebody's gotten swallowed. Not, there, no, there's no body on the ground. There's no body on the ground as it appears. It is my Michinaki. So we'll figure that out in just a moment. But either way, I'm looking forward to this new champion coming out. I'm looking forward to the missions because, like I said, the missions had some pretty sweet rewards as you're going up through them anyways. So now that this diverts after Arbiter, this is going to be awesome. So I'm assuming if it was after Ramen 2, I'd be worried that they're going to be like super, super challenging, super difficult missions. But since it's Arbiter after Arbiter, it goes Ramen 2 and then Marius. I don't actually expect this to be extremely challenging. It's going to be difficult. I mean, it's difficult areas of the game. Curse City, Hydra, all the different kind of stuff. Uh, it's going to be challenging to do. But I got a little bit of faith and a little bit of hope that it's not going to be like Awaken six champions to six-star Awakening. It's going to be a little bit crazy for most players. Hopefully, it's not going to be like finish the whole Curse City on hard difficulty. On normal, okay, that's, one, that's different. Normal is not going to be as difficult to actually do on hard mode that is gonna be difficult so i'm looking forward to hopefully having some reasonably accessible missions from most players and then pick up marius eventually as well as ramen down the road ramen the really reason why he's so difficult okay yeah this failed so the reason why ramen is so difficult isn't because the missions are hard per se it's because gold one is so difficult like the missions for ramen two the time you get to like the clear all the secret rooms in doom tower hard rotation it's not so much that it's difficult, it's that it took you forever to get there because the Gold 1 mission is actually very difficult for most players. But guys, with that said, best of luck if you're, well, best of luck going for this champion. Not if you are, when you are, because you're going to be going for this. Progress missions, they're worth doing. I've always said the progress missions are like a hand-holding guidance through the game. So they're definitely worth doing, always. I'm super excited for this. Let me know what you guys think about this new champion. Looking forward to actually play testing this guy and seeing how he actually works. Things going to be crazy. But hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.